So, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to try a little bit of channel filler just to uh, keep this channel alive while I deal with some personal crisis. So this will be a bit of a short one. We're dealing with one of these. Now, what's one of these things you might ask? Well, they come in pairs. And um, these are a CCTV ballon. Now, I use these for AHD cameras, but uh, the way they're wired, they work for pretty well anything. Uh, basically, they allow you to run video signal of various different formats down a piece of Cat5 cable for anywhere up to about 100 metres or a little bit more if you push it right. Um, and they use uh, two pair for power and two pair for signal, sometimes only one pair for each. Now, this is a good one. And you can see from here, there's a little RJ45 socket in there uh, for connecting video. And they even have the pin out here. Um, they come in a couple of different varieties and I have designed a circuit board um, to actually interface with these and determine if they're wired correctly. In fact, I'll grab one to show you. So I like to recycle and reuse. I have an ice cream container full of boards over here that I have designed. One of which is this board here, a nice little double-sided board. This allows me to put a bunch of LEDs. There's a pin header in here for diagnosing or plugging into it and diagnosing the video signal or tapping off it or tapping off the power for an external voltmeter. And uh, then we obviously have all our little wiring in the background. But this allows me to plug into one end of the lead and determine which pairs are working properly, which pairs have power, if the polarity is incorrect, all of that. So um, there is a different style of these, this one, and these are wired differently, but more or less the same principle. So why am I looking at this? Well, this one I was connected to a pan tilt zoom camera that recently went down in a big torrential downpour of rain. Now I had had this covered up fairly well with some aluminium foil tape and I thought quite weatherproof. But owing to my experience in the past with condensation, I had this facing downwards on a pole with a ring of tape hanging around the bottom so that any water or moisture that did get in could fall away. But the torrential downpour we had was so intense that it rained up, or at least that's my best explanation, because this got full of water. Now it is so black in there, it may be hard to tell exactly how bad it is. So I'm going to pause this, turn on a backlight, and we'll see what happens. Some backlighting here, we might be able to see just how bad it is in there. Um, it looks very dark and very corroded, and certainly the RJ45 plug that came out of that was actually quite bad. So uh, I chopped the plug off. But I took this down and decided I would dissect this and see exactly what's going on with it. And um, I think I'll be putting a junction box on that pole too. Let's crack this thing open. For this I'm going to need a screwdriver. My favourite Schneider this double, or my favourite Schneider insulated screwdriver. Um, good for high voltage stuff. This could be noisy on the camera so we'll see what happens. Give it a good smack. And it usually pops it open. We'll do the same on the other side. Give it a crack. And I can already see some droplets of water coming out. So I'm going to take this tape off here that I put on here. I really should have used amalgamating tape, but this was actually covered un under its own little shroud anyway. I think what may have happened is that um, water has actually been sucked up through the insulation. But we can get this one open now and let's have a look. It's definitely wet in there. That's after it's been sitting for a couple of days too, so it is still very wet. Um, and we can see here there's definitely some corrosion going on the back there. So, I guess looking at the inside of this, what may have happened is the water has actually welled up and not expelled itself. It may have probably worked better if I had left the board exposed. But there is a little filter um, on the board here, which is also full of water. Um, I could probably resurrect this if I wanted to, but I have so many of these, I'm just going to throw this in the junk box. But uh, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at. I am going to try one thing though, and I'll be right back. 
I want to demonstrate some of the techniques I use for cleaning boards on this. So uh, I'm going to use some of this stuff here. It's a service sole electronic circuit board cleaner. Very good for getting flux off things. But uh, we might change our camera angle slightly. And we'll swing this down below. And we'll have a look at this as I clean it. Now I'm going to take some of this and spray directly onto the board. And we're going to give it a quick scrub with a toothbrush. It's a bit of an awkward angle to do this in front of the camera. But we can probably see here pretty quickly that's cleaned up some of that corrosion. There will be some under that socket, no doubt. This does work as a bit of a um, water dispersant too. It does help. So we can see here, now it does make me sneeze. It's recording there and sneeze slightly, but that's all good. Um, now the bit that I probably won't ever get right again is inside this socket, but we can always try. And I know that's very badly out of focus, so let's bring our camera angle back up again, and my gimbal's a bit stiff. That's what she said. Anyway, um, get all this in here and give it a bit of a clean. We might maybe get it looking okay. If you're in the field and this was the only one you had and it had to work there on the dot, you might actually do it. I notice there's actually two pins missing out of this one, so they're not actually using all the conductors, but I think they only need four of them really for functionally. Some of these are better than others. There we go, it is sort of clean. I think we can probably hook some power up to this and see if it lights up. Um, we might do that because that'll tell us if I've got a short and uh, we'll throw it back in the junk box and I'll use it for spare parts. We have here a short Cat5 lead. I'm going to plug a good unit into this side and we're going to run a lead over to my junction box up here which you can probably see on the side of my bench. We're going to hook us into the 12 volt from the house battery and um, we'll come back down over here. Now we'll plug into this side which should show us a green light and we'll see what happens when we plug this end in to the other end of that cable. And we get nothing on this end which is not surprising. I wonder if we actually have a voltage coming out of that. That might be handy to know. Let me find a voltmeter and see what we've got coming out of that. Now, owing to the simplicity of how these things are, I could probably actually design one of these things for myself at some point. Um, I think the resistor here is really only for the LED and the other two resistors are for the filter. Nonetheless, let's um, have a look at how this thing powers up. Now, it should be worth noting this is a shagged cable, that's why I'm using it. Um, and this is a straight through one, even though it's yellow, it's been rewired a number of times in dire situations in the field. So let's plug this one in, let's hook our meter up here and go to 20 volt range. And we will go to this connection. No, we've got nothing coming out of it. As I suspected, we've got nothing. So I wonder if that other one's actually putting any current down the cable. We'll have a look here. Fold our meter over this way so you can see it. Um, now I think the outer two are usually what it uses. It's been a while since I designed the board, so I don't recall exactly which two pins do what. Oop, there was, on the center two pins, 12 volts. So crazy, let's use the center two pins, the ones that are closest to each other, in order to carry the main load. That would probably encourage corrosion, which is what we see. So I may design myself a compact version of one of these someday, and uh, get a whole bunch of boards done up. I do have some spare sockets, so I could probably replace this. You know what, while we're doing a short video, let's make this a little bit longer and just see if what I have is compatible. I have a box of bits. Um, 
primarily these I bought a whole bunch of these for making those circuit boards up and they're the metal shrouded type but I'm pretty sure the pinout is pretty much the same oh no so the pinout is actually different on these guys um, so no I couldn't probably replace that not easily anyway but we can see that it's only using four pins in here so I think I can probably come up with a lower loss version of one of these that uses two or one pair for signal and three pair for power so um, maybe that's what I'll do I'll design my own and I will rob their filter circuit off the only thing is I don't have any idea of what sort of level this conductor this uh, inductor is but uh, that probably shouldn't be too hard to figure out anyway we're gonna call this quits interesting diagnosis or dissection of a uh, damaged video ballon and for the record these things are NVL 219s I get these from AliExpress quite cheaply um, almost so cheap that it's not worth me making them and I think that's part of their plan but anyway I'll see you in the next video I hope it was interesting and you got to see my thumbs up because that's kind of what I like to see on the videos However, I don't make any money on them, so what you do is up to you. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, hopefully I will have sorted out my personal crisis by that point in time. See you later.